Okay, we're here today to review the Kane TV 7500 gimbal. Uh, you see here the package that it comes in when you receive it. The entire package shows the gimbal pre-assembled. You'll see here that all the armatures, all the handles, everything is already pre-assembled so you do not have to spend time assembling this before, uh, before you uh, use it. So this is already pre-assembled. Uh, once you take it out of here, it'll, you, it'll look just like this right here. Um, the handles will all be in place. Uh, everything you see here will be from the box with the exception of the camera. Okay, there are four major features that I want to point out for the uh, Cam TV 7500 gimbal. The first feature that I want to bring to your attention is the fact that the entire assembly of the gimbal, gimbal is already pre-assembled uh, out of the package when you receive it. Uh, the handles, the, the tubing, the joints, they're all, it's all one piece. You just take it out of the box and what you see here is what is pre-assembled and ready to go. Uh, speaking of pre-assembled, the second feature. The second feature would be the fact that all the wiring that you see, what, what little you see actually, uh, is all pre-assembled also and passing through the tubing that makes up the armature and the structure of the gimbal. Uh, it's all inside and uh, two really good reasons for that is the fact that it passes inside the tubing uh, to protect it from catching on anything while you're filming. Uh, the second feature of that is the fact that it provides a nice clean look to the overall gimbal. The third feature is the fact that just like the, the wiring is uh, protected, so is the control panel on the back. Uh, the control panel has a covering over the circuit boards and all the uh, soldered connections and wiring that's coming to it. So you see here that there's a covering over it, it's protected, and there's nothing to worry about it catching on anything or anything uh, coming in contact with it while you're filming. The other nice feature here about the enclosed uh, control panel is the fact that it has uh, an on-off toggle switch. The on-off toggle switch makes it quick and easy to be able to turn it on, turn it on, and turn it off, uh, as opposed to having to connect it at the battery. This is, makes it very convenient for putting that together. Okay, now the fourth feature that I want to uh, bring to your attention here is the fact that uh, in the control panel is uh, the control panel has been factory set the PID has been factory set in the control panel so it, it will um, uh, work with uh, a variety of cameras including the uh, 5D Mach 3, the 5D Mach 2, the 7D and the GH4 so it works with all of these cameras and you don't have to connect to a computer to set up a PID uh, for a different uh, camera. So that is the fourth uh, feature about, uh, one of the technical features here about this gimbal. Now, the next thing that we'll do is uh, look at how to set up the balancing for the seat of where the camera sits when you set the camera inside, how to balance that. And so that's what we'll do next. I'll talk to you about the Kane TV 7500 uh, gimbal's uh, uh, use. And basically, before you power the gimbal, uh, before you power it up, the first thing you should do is balance everything uh, on the uh, gimbal. When I say everything, I'm talking about the three major motions for pitch, roll and yaw. So uh, the first thing that you'll be doing is uh, of course mounting uh, the camera to the camera seat assembly and then once you have uh, mounted that then we'll talk about how to adjust the seat for pitch. Uh, 
First of all, the camera itself from its mounting screw on the bottom, you would mount it to the bottom seat. You can see there are two columns here, two columns, and then there's a bottom seat bar and a top seat bar. And the bottom seat bar, you mount the bottom of the camera to the mounting screw. And uh, uh, of course, this is adjustable so that the camera can move forward or backwards as you're balancing for pitch. Uh, but once you've mounted this, you should just mount it generally to start with and best guess as to where it should go. And then you would mount it at the top to the uh, hot shoe at the top. There will be, there's this, you connect a bracket. Uh, this adjustable mounting bracket which will mount it to the top bar uh, of the mounting assembly. So once that's all secured then you can see a slotted, a slotted hole here that you can adjust the camera forward or backward and then same thing at the bottom with the mounting screw uh, adjustment. You can move that. So you can see that the camera would move forward and backward. The uh, once you'd move this forward and backward, the uh, camera will be stabilized. You can see there's some general locations you can place the camera relative to the size of the body of the camera, but uh, you want to set it in here as best you can. One thing to consider in the very beginning uh, to shorten the amount of time it takes to balance the pitch is in the mounting that the top and bottom locations for the horizontal bars should be pretty much equal. So this distance at the bottom should be very similar to this distance at the top. Uh, and actually it'd be very important that this distance over here should be the same as the other side. So this would be straight across making this more, the whole uh, housing more stable. Same thing for the top. <clears throat> Where the horizontal bar connects on this column, it should mount also on that column at the same place once you get this all set in place and secure. Um, the adjustment process will be primarily moving this forward and backwards uh, to get the pitch to work. Once you've got it in place, you know you've been successful when you can move the camera and it does not pitch anymore. It'll stay in place. You can see that this one has been pre-adjusted before we made the video. And so you can see that it all stays in place once you move the camera. Uh, it doesn't want to continue to rotate. Uh, so, at this point, the pitch has been established. Uh, the roll of the gimbal would be controlled uh, here. Uh, at this point, at this joint, you can see the control of roll here. Uh, the main thing to control here is that you want all of this part, uh, this motion of the gimbal to stay in place. You'll know it's balanced also just like you did with pitch, with, with the roll, you'll know it's correct when it stays in place. If it doesn't stay in place, then it, hasn't been, it has not been balanced. You need to adjust it. Now, the question is, how do you balance it? This bar on the back that comes across here connects to this housing. And this housing, this bar is continuous through here and connects to these two joints. You would unscrew, loosen, these screws here so that this bar can slide left and right, if you will, left and right. The balancing of yaw is pretty straightforward and, and easy, uh, but to know that you have it balanced correctly before you power on the unit, uh, what you'll notice is that as you move things, it stays in place. This unit is already balanced. Uh, it, was, uh, it takes a while to balance it because what you do is you fine tune the location of this particular bar right here. You see the bar comes through from here from this connector and goes through this assembly and you can see it coming out here on the other end. Uh, you have to move through this assembly, you move this bar in and out to get this to balance. Uh, when you have it balanced, once again, it'll move and it won't it will it'll stop and stay in place. If it continues to roll, and I'm going to show you that if I push it with my fingers it rolls, but you can see it stops at a place. That means it's balanced. Uh, you know you've done that correctly uh, of moving this particular uh, arm of the assembly 
uh, in and out of this assembly here. So that's how you balance the, uh, uh, the yaw and uh, the other parts of this. Then once you have balanced yaw, you've balanced the roll in the back and the pitch, then all of these positions will stay in place when they get to a position. They stop and they stay in place. You can see everything stays in place. That means it's in balance. You can roll this and the yaw will stay in place. So this is how, and most important, that you balance the gimbal before you power it on. Now that everything is balanced, then we're ready to power it on from the back, as we pointed out earlier from the back back here, the toggle switch for the power. Okay, now I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the really unique and exciting um, features about the CamTV 7500 uh, gimbal here. So what, I have, what we've got set up is actually two different cameras. They're the same, it's the same gimbal, but we've set up two different cameras. Uh, the one that you see here, um, mounted here, is like, the, uh, is like the GH4. It's about 800 grams and so it's very similar. Uh, so the uh, uh, control panel is already set up with a PID that will handle this as well as without connecting to a computer. You do not have to connect a computer to if you mount a heavier camera, kind of like this one here, which is the 5D Mark III. Um, this one uh, is um, right around uh, 2 kilograms and the PID you do not have to connect and change all that out through uh, a program in a computer. You do not have to connect. All you have to do is switch out the cameras. Left and right, up and down. So it's very, very versatile and moving things around. And then with that, I'll pick this up. We're we'll going to the mobile mode here. Let's see here. There we go. Now we have three different modes. The first mode is uh, set by pressing the joystick one time. The first mode is called a uh, is called the follow mode. The follow mode you can uh, access by pressing the joystick one time. You hear the the beep, and then. Uh, as you can in all modes, you can uh, adjust with joystick, and you can notice with this one, it's like a following, following a, uh, a scene. You can see here that it's moving, and you're able to follow up and down, left and right. And also, if you're running, it's very easy to run with this. It stays very stable, very stable. Now the second mode that I'm going to describe here is called a combination mode. It's a combination of a, uh, you, you access it by pressing the joystick twice. And you hear the, the, uh, the beeps go off. And with it, you can adjust, but then the, the camera stays level. Now here's one of the really exciting things. Look at the angle. You don't get any shake out of this. It's not shaking at all. Look at the angle you can get from this. This is incredible. So that is up and down. And as I said, this is a combination mode. So when you go left and right, it still stays level, but you are follow. It's in the, like a follow mode. Now there's a third mode here called a lock mode. And you'll see that by, you, you can access that by pressing the joystick three times. One, two, three, and it's set when you hear the beeps. And then with this, you can um, adjust up just like you can. But you notice that the, the camera stays locked in its position. Wide angles, very cool, very cool. And then, likewise, left and right, and you can run with this very easily. Like this. Now here's one another cool, cool um, feature of this model is that you can take it and turn it, keep it level. And if you need to get a high shot, look how high I've got this above my head. 
and then you can shoot like this very easily. I'm very high up here. You still have access with the uh, top of the joystick, and you can adjust if you need to. But every the once it's in position, the the camera the camera very clearly stays in position on what it's looking at. And you can spring it back. Okay, so that is the uh, three modes that you can have with this. Uh, the Cam TV 7500, and um, you can see here that uh, we have both cameras. Uh, both of them can be set up with this, without uh, changing the PID through a computer or connecting to the control panel at all. So uh, that's a look at the uh, Cam TV uh, 7500, and. Uh, uh, look out for it and look for the Cam TV logo on the gimbal. Thank you.